So I had a second year junior rower come into the clinic with a chief complaint of right-sided shoulder pain. Uh, you'll see on the video uh, I scribbled on there, the blue indicates the shoulder blades, and then the red indicates the relative region of where he was having a shoulder pain. Um, after going through the initial evaluation, definitely found some very specific patterned weakness in and around the shoulder blade itself, uh, extending not only down through the lower trapezius, uh, rhomboids, and then the uh, levator scap, uh, as also showing with the serratus anterior. Uh, also noticed some significant differences in terms of how he was actually utilizing the muscles and the coordination for left side uh, arm and scapular movement compared to the right side. Um, now it's important, especially when you have a rower come in, and this is a second year junior rower, um, Clinical evaluation is one thing, but actually getting them on the erg and have them row, I'm just going to clear some of this out here, it can be quite telling. So let's actually take a look at his rowing. And I slowed it to half speed here. Generally, what you want to see is you, if I were to draw a line directly down the center of the spine, it would be relatively symmetrical. Now, if you're looking at symmetry, a few things should pop out at you. And let's actually stop and take a look at those. And to do so, let's actually set up where exactly we're going to be looking. Uh, the first place that I want to look is not necessarily at the shoulder itself, but at the spine. And actually, his spinous processes here, right down through the thoracolumbar uh, area, is going to provide a great visual cue. Uh, second thing I'm going to be looking at is, relatively speaking, how is, from a symmetry perspective, how is the right shoulder blade uh, moving compared with the left shoulder blade? And looking at some relative uh, shoulder heights. The third thing, so that's number one. Number two, the third thing is I actually want to take a look at the relative uh, arm to elbow um, angle. How much of a difference is there between left side and right side? So again, let's back off some of my extra drawing here and then take a closer look. We're going to start by looking at the spine. So let's clear that off too. And I'm just going to manually move this through slow motion. Keep an eye on the vertical spine and how as he approaches the catch, you see a rotation to the right. He engages the drive it tends to straighten back up again. Have him go through, starts out nice and vertical, pretty symmetrical, and then especially as that right arm starts to reach, so does that part of the spine. Okay, that's number one. Number two, let's take a look at the shoulder blades. As he is coming around the corner here, we can already see a pretty significant disparity between what's going on along the medial scapular border here and the medial scapular border here. Uh, pretty obvious in terms of, you know, if I were to draw a line straight down and we're looking at the relative angle out one side versus the other, just how much that right side tends to be kind of floating out a little bit more. Let's get rid of our drawing here. Now you know what we're looking for. Especially right there into the catch. We have a pretty darn steep angle here and not so much over on this side. Okay, so there's been a loss of scapula positioning and scapula control, especially as he's getting into the catch and extending that shoulder blade uh, or protruding it um, toward the anterior aspect of his thorax. As he is going to engage, what we're seeing here is if you're looking left side versus right side, what are we seeing, again, from a symmetry perspective, though, lead us to believe that there is some deficiency happening on the right side versus the left side? Well, if you take a look here, and I'm going to slow this down to quarter and just have him row, watch that right side and how he has to take a lot more effort on that right side to manage the shoulder blade to try and keep it uh, as efficient as can be through utilizing the compensatory patterns. Lots of additional work through the upper trapezius, especially right before he engages the catch, that not only just the right arm, but the right shoulder itself has to rise significantly, the upper trapezius, 
up through there. That has a lot of extra work to do, and um, but yet he's missing the lower trap, especially engagement through the catch through the mid part of the drive. All right. Lastly, let's look at look at uh, arm position. I'm going to back this up again here, and we'll manually move it. So because he is having to depend a heck of a lot more on his upper trapezius, on the, uh, the posterior deltoid, and on the rhomboid especially, uh, there is a great disparity that we're going to see here in terms of how much angle we have between the uh, arm to body, left side versus arm to body, right side. And this is something fairly classically that, uh, that I do see when it comes to most people who come with a complaint of shoulder pain. Um, now, interestingly, what we found is, and we found this actually through the initial question and answer before we even laid hands on it, one of the questions I asked was, is, have you had any uh, complaint or have you had any discomfort in the ribs? And sure enough, uh, a couple days previously, that is exactly what had happened, uh, where the serratus anterior comes down around the ribs, right around rib number uh, six to seven. Um, there was some uh, discomfort he had been experiencing, and then actually through the focused physical examination, what we were seeing is from a compensatory pattern, um, or sorry, not compensatory, but so much as a protective pattern. Um, any muscles that were functioning appropriately, like for example, the um, the uh, intercostal muscles were very much trying to squeeze down and protect that rib cage, uh, while the shoulder blade itself was not necessarily showing the same type of uh, movement um, patterns because of the uh, inability of some of these muscles to do their job and the hyperactivity of some of these muscles to do their job. And we can't see, and I, I can't show you the video uh, from the front, but uh, the uh, pec minor especially is being very active and basically pulling that shoulder blade and tipping it forward. Um, so lots to work on here. And this is more than just saying, hey, let's uh, give some, some resisted external rotation exercises and let's... Uh, uh, your rest, you know, there's actually some good skilled physical therapy that needs to happen, some neurological rehabilitation to make sure that we can bring some parity back uh, between the left side and the right side and to make for a successful season.